Taking the towers for Team Liquid, it is Diego and Buffmack facing off against B-Rad and Jay Monty, so no big surprises here. Yeah, shocking that they are eight and one, not because they're not good enough to be, because clearly they are, but more so just because of the level of competition in 2v2 and the fact that they've been able to maintain relatively a perfect record. Yeah, losing a single game with the way the season looks so far. Remember, it's not like they have gone through an easy path to that lit to, to that record at the point, because they've gone through Fnatic, through Pain, through Immortals. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So we see Poison coming down, Baby Dragons, of course, Giant Skeleton at the top of your screen, a lot of the same that we're used to seeing in 2v2. A graveyard, though. Poison easily responds to the graveyard. Nothing there to catch the Baby Dragon. A late NATO comes in. And you see the oops coming out from Tribe. Jay Monty unhappy with that moment. Yeah, a big oops. That's a lot of, of Baby Dragon belches in. 1477, people don't know this, the original plan for Columbus's voyage across the Atlantic. <laughs> Had to wait a, a little bit longer than that. Just a little. That's a date I totally made up. <laughs> Here we go, graveyard down one more time. That baby dragon from Tri played high and picked off by the Musketeer of Liquid, and now that tower down below 1,000 HP. Nasty freeze NATO combination for Team Liquid. Diego and Buffmack playing like the squad we know they are. And an Ice Spirit there to mitigate all the damage. Not necessary, but better safe than sorry. Entering into double elixir time, Diego and Buff almost perfect at this stage in the game. And this might be some of the best that we've seen Graveyard play. Now again, it is against Graveyard as well. Skeleton's not quite getting to the tower. Musketeer and Ice Wizard there to meet them. A very high Inferno Tower to slow down that baby dragon. And being able to get those troops in front of the Inferno Tower, very, very nice. Yeah, notice Liquid playing that giant skeleton directly into the tower, looking for only its bomb. And a solid push left-hand lane now for Tribe. Yep. And Tribe, Baby Dragon on the tower again. Tribe opting to ignore most of the defense on the right-hand side, trying to go all in on the bottom left. Will they get it? That they, yes, they will. Here we go into double or into sudden death overtime. You see Diego wiping his brow. Probably thought they could get away with that one. Did not. And now this is all tied up. In fact, Tribe a little bit ahead. Now very, very curious to see how these teams will play with opposing towers still alive not being able to create the counter push that you're looking for and Graveyard behind. Inferno Tower down. We'll keep that giant skeleton very far away from doing anything significant. But that bomb may hit the baby dragon. It does not. It's the Musketeer. Splitting the Dark Princes is Tribe. See Liquid prepping for a push. Tribe recognizes and immediately places a second Inferno Tower down. And the log trying to knock the Ice Wiz out of range. The Baby Dragon can take out the Inferno Tower. Does get some chip damage, but not much else. Both teams playing very aggressive offense and stellar defense. Almost no damage done on either of their towers. It's gonna be interesting to see how they pull off getting a graveyard freeze on tower because you know they're gonna they're gonna most likely be trying to freeze both the princess tower and the king tower, taking those cannons out of play. But that also means you can put your defense on the far side of the princess tower. Yep. Yeah, gonna be very tough to pick and choose where to use the freeze. Do you freeze the inferno, the princess, the king? Which do you pick from? Only most likely being able to grab two of the three. And so a big we, push here for Liquid. So we might see the first answer to that question. Poison high, though, from Tribe to play defense. Yeah, very nice poison from Tribe. And 
look at that. Despite all the coming down the lane on the left-hand side, not a tick of damage was dealt until that one baby dragon belch. So this one has draw written all over it. Unlikely that either team will find a way through, and you gotta imagine that Team Liquid very frustrated to give up that tower in the waning seconds of the regulation time. Yeah, and a very impressive showing from Tribe being able to sacrifice their right hand tower, conserve just a bit of elixir, go all in on the left, and push this game to a draw that looked like it was lost very early on. So will someone go for a desperation double graveyard for you to try to steal this thing in the final second? So it would be a big gamble. And there you see Tribe just putting up the Inferno Tower, ready to go back to the drawing board. Same with Liquid. Come back in game number two. A draw to end game number one between Diego B and Buffmack from Team Liquid, and of course B Rad and Jay Monty from Tribe. Game one, a complete stalemate. Going further into game number two, wonder if any changes will be made. Do we see the graveyard decks come out one more time, or will someone make a bit of a shift? Yeah, I mean, Diego and Buffmack may stick with what they had since they got that game stolen from them, or that tie stolen from them at the very last seconds of regulation. And just to remind those at home, if this is a draw, then game three is lowest single tower. If this is a draw. If, if and only if. So might be Graveyard again from Liquid. See the high Inferno Tower there from Tribe, kind of expecting Graveyard. Keeping anything they can from crossing the river. And could be the same from Tribe again as well. And there is the Graveyard. That giant skeleton needs to get pulled back. However, their giant skeleton uh, Tribe's giant skeleton is distracted by the skellies from the graveyard. Stuck way inside. A lot more spent on defense than they would have liked. So first exchange goes to Team Liquid. Wonder if they will keep the pace on. Graveyard number two comes down, here we go. And the Ice Wizard does stay alive, so very well played there from Team Liquid to conserve its HP. And that log dies just short of the Ice Wiz, so this is gonna be a little bit more damage. Ooh, and look at that, a big Mega Minion swinging on the tower. <laughs> and it is Graveyard again from Tribe Gaming. So both teams thinking they can run back what they had in the previous game but with better execution. And right now, Team Liquid is doing just that. But this is this is how the last game started as well. Team Liquid was off to a pretty good start, a commanding league throughout. And then at the very last moments of regulation, Tribe popped back in. Well, that's what Graveyard will do to you, Andrew. It'll let you think that you got everything under control, and then one time it gets away from you, and bye-bye yep. tower. Yeah, and those freezes just really, really compile that damage. And Giant Skeleton does not get across the river for Tribe, so leaving that Graveyard push all by its lonesome trying to pull something off. And that Musketeer and Mega Minion will stay alive. Could be a good moment to go opposite lane. There we go. Liquid pouring it on right now. In a good spot, Freeze comes down. That Graveyard requiring a little bit more Elixir spent. Skelly's on the tower for Liquid. Left hand tower down to 745 for Tribe Gaming. We're going to sudden death overtime. At the moment, Team Liquid playing pretty much perfect. Musketeer placed high to pull that Dark Prince over. Nothing else there to aggro it, however. Poison down on defense for Liquid. Even with the Dark Prince picking up the Princess shots. And there you see a nice high skelly to keep those baby dragons from crossing the river once again. Nothing down yet. There we go. So pretty decent sequence here from Liquid on defense. They still eat a lot of damage, though. And one baby dragon bounce brings that tower below 1,500 HP. 
Freezes and now it. Craig Garfries for Liquid. Oh, that's a lot. Skeletons on tower down to 242. That is going to do it. A log and a poison will send Tribe, well, I guess to game three. To game three now. <laughs> game number one was a, was a tie. Here we go. Liquid with one in hand. We're heading to game three. So Liquid taking game number two. We now move into game number three. If Tribe wins this, we will go to a game four. So the question is, will we see Graveyard again? We just saw lo double lava back to back to back, and so far Tribe answering no to that question, unless for some reason they're playing minor Graveyard. Yeah, maybe we'll see some spell cycling. Who knows? We've seen a lot of different combinations with the Miner. Could be Lava Hound, could be Spell Cycle. It's interesting how two squads might get caught sort of in a rhythm, as we just saw in our last match with Complexity and Dignitas doing double Lava Hound three games in a row. Yeah, and I don't really love that, to be honest. I, I, I like to see some variation, at least keep your opponents guessing. But a lot of people say, well, we played it three times in a row because no one thought we'd play it three times in a row, so we are keeping them guessing. To each their own. And Liquid going with that logic, bringing out the graveyard one more time. They probably feel like they did a great job winning the first game, uh, within the first game, but barely gave it away. One game number two, why not go to the well a third time? And with a game in hand, a loss here isn't devastating. And nice job protecting that Dark Goblin with the Skeletons. Does go down with the Ice Wizard. The Dark Goblin is a great response to Graveyard, being able to play it behind the King Tower and still pick off those Skeletons from a Graveyard while avoiding the Freeze. Freeze coming in for Team Liquid. Doesn't pay off too much. And then on the other end, Miner picked up by the Ice Wiz. Yeah, I think we've seen maybe three Miners already from Tribe. Not much success coming from them. Yeah, Liquid knows where that Miner's going every time. And so far, no other significant offense mounted in conjunction with the Miner. Yep. Maybe we'll start to see Spell Cycle now. And there's the Dark Goblin in the back, as you can see. However, it does work its way up a little higher than I bet Tribe would have liked. Now in freeze range, but it's a little bit late for that. There's the rocket. The naked rocket goes down on the tower, something we're not used to seeing. Very interesting choice there by Tribe. Yeah, and a very aggressive play. And now you see baby dragons, double baby dragons on that tower because they were splashing the Mega Minion. Mega Minion finally moves away. We've seen the minor rocket play together. You know, you throw the miner, then throw the rocket immediately to hit whatever troops pick up the miner. The naked rocket and then the miner a few seconds behind. Very, very interesting call there from Tribe. Yeah, I, I think they're just trying to finally get some damage in on the tower. I mean, they are technically in the lead. Miner comes down. Freeze also comes down for Liquid. Miner gets there before the Skellies. Log does a nice job, and then Baby Dragon, Mega Minion picking up the support troops. And now we'll see. Again, so here's the problem is they're picking up that Miner with the Dark Prince. You can't rock at a Dark Prince when its shield is still up. Right. I believe there's only one Dark Prince. Yes, there is only one Dark Prince on the field for Liquid. So now would be the time to Miner Rocket, knowing that it needs to be picked up by a card that does not have a shield. So we'll see if B-Rad and Jay Monty are thinking the same way as you, Andrew. They, their next Miner probably coming fairly soon. Oh, and look oh. at that NATO. No. A horribly misclicked NATO from J Monty and B Rad. That could be the game right there. Three elixir down the drain, and there you have the miner comes in. No rocket behind. They have to, at this point, if that was their plan, now that plan is gone because they have to get back some elixir so they can play defense. And now these teams are basically tied up. Team Liquid still a little behind. Miner back in, going to the back of the tower this time. And look at, well, I mean, they know the Nato's on a cycle, so fine play. And look at this giant skeleton to the wow. tower on the right hand side. One more hit, that is going to do it. Oh, Tribe just stole wow. this set from Liquid. Unbelievable. You look at Diego and Buffback, they can't believe it. I can't believe it. The audience can't believe it. Wow.
<laughs> it's hard not to love that guy on the left. Jay Monty doing his victory dance. We are going to game four. This is it, game four of 2v2. And as a reminder, we are now in tiebreaker rules, so no towers have to fall. I wonder what changes that might make to how and what they play in this fourth and final game. I mean, both of the games that Tribe kind of came back and won were in moments that were just shocking to us, Liquid, the crowd here. It, the giant skeleton getting to the tower almost feels like it's always going to be a miscommunication when that happens. And then the first game getting that tower down in the final seconds of regulation play, just Tribe hanging on. They will not go away. And Tribe takes a big first shot with that RG down in 1942. Liquid's got the lava on the board. And we're going Royal Giant from Tribe. So Tribe lava's up inside. You can see it's going to be easy to pick up that Inferno or that L Lava Hound. Maybe no, no. Lightning comes down. Just a minor to the Dark Goblin. And there you go. Easy NATO. And, and you, that, see, you see Buffmax shaking his head there. Yeah, and that is a big King Tower activation. Uh, Liquid should have played in the safe spot. Now those pups are going to do infinitely less damage with the King Tower activated. I mean, I see what he was trying to do, getting after the Dark Album there, but you just have to know that that push wasn't going to result in the damage you wanted. Yeah. And a big giant skelly, royal giant push coming in for Liquid, or excuse me, against Liquid. So a lot spent there that doesn't quite go all the way for Liquid, of course, getting that tower down to 1726 is still nice and being even in Elixir, that 300 deficit, 300 HP deficit does hurt. A little three for three trade there. Going for a sneaky Dark Goblin. Although this isn't 1v1, you're not gonna pull that off anywhere near as frequently. Yeah. All right, Lumberjack getting through this time. Let's see what Liquid can do. Nope, perfectly cleaned up. Yeah, and you look at the spells in hand by Tribe. They've got Poison, Nato, Lightning, Snowball, and Log. So if this becomes a spell cycle battle, which it is low as single tower, they definitely have the edge in spells. By a significant margin. And you see now being sure to get some tower damage and clearing out those support troops in the back. And a Lightning now coming down. So we're actually looking at the same spells minus a Log for Liquid. Another RG, Lightning should be coming down here. There we go, Lightning does hit. Big Lightning. Less than 800 HP on Team Liquid's tower. And Tribe is just being certain every single time they play a spell to get tower damage. Yeah, you need to get that value. It is so imperative in these lowest single tower games. That Lumberjack does come down and stops the, oh, no, Royal Giant will get a shot in. Down to 474, that was an important shot because now they really are in spell range. And a Lightning will do it. There we go. Tribe never giving up, bouncing back over and over and over. And now they go to 5 and 0 oh in 2v2 sets. By far and away, the best 2v2 record here at CRL. That was really, really amazing. I mean, it looked over and over again like Liquid might have their number, but Tribe, they use their experience, their understanding. And again, and we, we talked about it a lot in that game, the continued, the continued use of spells in the 